I think the purpose of education is to give you lifelong skills that you can use in various situations in later life. Great. Um, I think it prepares you for the workplace so you're ready for the future. Uh, it's about learning how to learn so that you're always ready to take on new challenges and opportunities. It focuses on interest instead of just making it a very, very um, broad, broad and broad learning experience because it helps you focus on your interest and what you want to do specifically instead of just making making it more vague. But then not everyone like not everyone's interested in all of their subjects. Yeah, you don't have to do choice. subjects that they don't that they're not interested in. So someone can Yeah, but that's where you give them the opportunities in later life to such GCSEs yeah. and A levels in university to. But then if you're making, services. I mean, it's difficult because you don't want to lock yourself into any like job too early. But if you make mm. the choices earlier. Then you can choose to specialise in your interests earlier on. Yeah, I think that's a change. But if you have lots of subjects, then it can prepare you for later life in terms of different. I think it's important. So, like the more subjects you do, the more different things you're going to be able to do. You're introduced more jobs you can go into. You're introduced. You're introduced early into these these interests that you might be. You don't know you. Yeah, exactly. It enables you to look further into it. Say, from going from GCSE to. Yeah. It's really interesting when we talk about aims of education because. Quite often the students will talk about skills, they'll talk about jobs, they'll talk about their lives uh, in the future, but not many of them actually talk about knowledge. And when we ask them to then reflect on their subjects and why they learn subjects, it's a different conversation and it's very difficult for them, and I imagine for many of us, to try and link subjects and a subject-based curriculum with the aims of education. What is it that we're actually trying to do? And it's that aspiration that underlies much of the work of capabilities and the world of powerful knowledge. And this idea of powerful knowledge uh, linking the subject-based curriculum to the aims of education uh, is quite an important idea and something that, that we have been looking at. Something that we then did in, as a school was to say, well, I wonder if this notion of powerful knowledge can be applied to other subjects. All the work thus far has been in the world of geography, geography teaching and geography education. But what we wanted to do here at the City of London Freeman School was to say, does this idea of powerful knowledge translate? Can the history department find uh, the powerful historical knowledge? Can maths teachers do the same? Can English teachers do the same? And it was that idea that prompted us to run a workshop here at Freeman's. So we ran a workshop uh, here at City of London Freeman School um, and it took place over a whole morning. It was, it was really great that we had that chance. And in the, in the morning, Professor David Lambert came to the school and he gave a lecture about notions of powerful knowledge, about the capability approach. I also spoke uh, about some of my ideas and some of my research. And that really set the scene and set the tone uh, for the rest of the, for the morning. We then got all the departments to sit together in their teams of subject specialists um, and to really uh, think about this notion of powerful knowledge and we asked them a very simple question we said how and in what ways does your subject provide young people with the powerful knowledge on which their future capability will depend and it was not really about trying to sell the subject trying to say why study maths or why study English it's a bit more specific than that in fact it's much more specific than that this is about knowledge. This is almost saying, without your subject in the school curriculum, what are the young people missing out on? What are they not going to get? What are they not going to learn? Because if we can articulate that, then we can articulate the need for a subject-based curriculum. Many departments actually found the task really quite difficult. I think for, for, for most of us, the geographers, the historians, certainly the humanities teachers, I think found it quite straightforward to try and identify this sense of powerful knowledge. But what was interesting was the maths teachers found it incredibly difficult. They've never really been asked before to, uh, to, to, to justify why their subject exists. They've never really been asked before to try and identify what powerful maths knowledge is. As one of them said to me, well, I, I can do it, I've always been able to do it, and I've always been able to teach it. But actually trying to work out what it is that we're doing is quite difficult. And, and I found that, as, as a non-mathematician, I found that really quite profound and really quite interesting. Other subjects uh, were talking about themselves in terms of skills. Uh, the, the sports teachers, for example, very, very good at coming up with what they felt 
the powerful knowledge of sports teaching was. But again, for them, it was a lot based around skills and about the ability to do things and, and function in certain ways. There's a download with this uh, video which will show you the ways in which staff at one school, at this school, at my school, uh, decided to articulate notions of powerful knowledge. And it would be very interesting to see if that chimes with what you think and what your colleagues think in your schools about what is the powerful knowledge of, the, of their subjects, of these other subjects in the school curriculum. You may disagree. Really proud of the work that Richard's been doing on his PhD, uh, and it was wonderful that we were able to benefit from that, uh, that research uh, in the context of a school inset at the start of this year. Got us off to a really good start. Not very often that as departments we sit down and really evaluate what we do and what our contributions are in the context of a bigger whole school picture. And Richard's work really helped us to do that, helped us to, do, to, to, to talk, open up a dialogue uh, as colleagues within a department, think about that bigger picture, think about how our teaching contributes to that bigger picture. Uh, and this was a, a fantastic opportunity for us uh, to share those thoughts and, and to enter a period of reflection.